I shall simply, simply tell him three things, things, that's all. That's one, one, bide your time. Two, two, two keep your nose, nose clean. clean. And three, three don't, don't let the, the bastards, bastards grind you down. down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs>
But first... <laughs> first, the news. Britain's gravediggers came out on strike this morning, and this afternoon the undertakers came out in deepest sympathy. <laughs> a tragic accident has ended the career of Plastics, the amazing plastic man. He sat on a radiator today and made a complete pool of himself. <laughs> <laughs> George, George Trimble, George Trimble, Blackpool's longest serving deck chair attendant was better tonight after collapsing at work today. It took five people 40 minutes to work out how to get him up again. <laughs> Music. And a team of researchers in Salzburg have uncovered an early Mozart score. She was only 16 and lived over the bakery opposite. <laughs> Finally, in Wales today, the anti-English front claimed responsibility for Max Boyce's cabaret act. <laughs> but now a sketch, featuring Mr. Ronnie Corbett, who's always being let down by people, otherwise he'd never get off the bus. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Their opening monologues were absolutely fantastic. They had Brilliant. to do it in such a different way compared to all the other variety comedy shows out there but ronnie barker wasn't playing like himself there like ronnie corbett did he was actually trying to pretend to be a news reporter mm -hmm. or a news reader which was absolutely ingenious because ronnie barker he didn't consider himself as a comedian a comedy actor that's how he did his roles well, then that sounds like a true performer because uh, somebody who really do who really does have a talent, they can do it all. They can yeah. do comedy, they can do drama, they can just fit into whatever role they need to, and just if that spark is there, it'll work. It will. Mm -hmm. Robin Williams was that way. He could do yes. anything. He was known mm -hmm. for his comedy because that's kind of where he cut his teeth. But the man could just <clears throat> just point and click, and he could do it. Just, just like Leslie Nielsen as well, considering he yes. started off as a serious actor and oh, became yeah. a comedian. Yeah, sometimes you just have to find your your niche. But if you're good at at, at it all, you'll be successful. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the the amazing thing I think of those as well is that um, a so much of their humor is word based, um, which perhaps may not necessarily translate to other parts of the English speaking world. But most of that, you guys were laughing your heads off, um, uh, despite the fact that for one or two of them, you may not even have actually got half of the references that were there because, unfortunately, obviously, they are some of the rep some of the references can be a bit dated. But most, you know, the the the, the sheer play on words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's timeless. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Hmm. Did, did they ever go off script? Because I mean, you could tell that they read the script, but I swear a couple times it looked like they were about to start laughing. You know, because you may have a script, but things happen and you start laughing and have to improvise. I'm not sure they. I think they were normally pretty good, for, pretty good for sticking with what they got. But yeah, you occasionally you can sort of see them. When that possibly when they know what's coming up, you know, he's trying trying not to laugh. Right. Yeah. So I don't think they ever went off scripts as such, but they definitely cracked up each other a couple of times. <laughs> but they just kind of rolled it. with it. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. <laughs> well, anyway, for our next clip is a very early black and white clip featuring John Cleese himself. And this was on a program called The Week That Was. Here we go. <laughs> I look down on him because I am upper class. I look up to him because he is upper class. But I look down on him because he is lower class. <laughs> I am middle class. I know my place. <laughs> I look up to them both. But I don't look up to him as much as I look up to him. Because <laughs> he has got innate breeding. I have got innate breeding, but I have not got any money. <laughs> so sometimes I look up to him. 
I still look up to him. Because although I have money, I am vulgar. <laughs> but I'm not as vulgar as him. So I still look down on him. <laughs> I know my place. <laughs> I look up to them both. But while I am poor, I am industrious, honest and trustworthy. Had I the inclination, I could look down on them. <laughs> but I don't. We all know our place, but what do we get out of it? I get a feeling of superiority over them. I get a feeling of inferiority from him. <laughs> but a feeling of superiority over him. I get a pain in the back of my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize John Cleese was so tall. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they pulled that sketch off so well. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and, it's, and it's so typically so typically English, even more than British in the in, in the class distinction as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and that's the. I mean, and that that piece right there, compared to what American comedy, especially at the time, well, going back to the '80s with the first clip, uh, compares to the Saturday Night Live. I mean, mm -hmm. Saturday Night Live, the early Saturday Night Lives were on par with that, but it got to be where it was more slapstick, and even I mean, it 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 was a ghost of itself, and that's what I like about English comedy. English comedy is it can be dry but it's still funny it can be dark and it's hilarious i mean that's it's very clever yeah it's clever yeah and the play on and like you said before the play on words mm -hmm. uh smart comedy is awesome i mean that's that i love smart comedy i agree completely agree <laughs> well um if we all want to move on now a next clip um Colin and Purple, you know about an old Hovis advert about a kid walking up the hill with a bicycle. Oh, bike. yes. Yep. Oh, yes. <laughs> we had real now, of tea. For Mark Deadman and Arwen, this clip is going to make you laugh because when this original Hovis clip was released, Ronnie Barker had to do a parody on it. So okay. here we go if you're ready to chuckle. Oh, yes, to, uh, to add on at the end, I've had to put subtitles in because you can't hear what he's saying for the last few lines because everyone's laughing over it. Okay. So, here we go. you know war-torn 
you know, oh, he's down on his luck. He's so poor. He's got his beloved loaf of bread. <laughs> no, that's just Yorkshire. <laughs> Well, I think I, I'll tell you what, though. Some I've just I, I've just seen uh, regarding the the original advert. Mm -hmm. um, it was directed by some. Okay, and in two thousand and nine, it was voted the best advert of all time. <laughs> so not the not the, not the sketch, the actual ad, the actual the, the actual original advert. And that, that, that music is um, Dvorak's New World Symphony. And I'm trying to remember what if where if, if it's um I'm sure it's been used as a hymn somewhere, but I can't remember. Well, the thing is that hill where he was walking up is so famous now because it's in Somerset or Dorset, I think it is. And uh it's like a tourist attraction now for people to go and visit and like recreate the advert. Mm. That falls. That falls with the old saying of walking up, uh, walking uphill both ways in the U.S. Uh, that's an old saying here going to school. I walked uphill both ways to go to school or go to work back in the day. So yeah, yeah. that fits. That's appropriate. Just add the snow and you've got everything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just really like the idea of a bunch of people with loaves of bread all conga lining up this hill. Yeah, <laughs> trying to recreate yes. that. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I did it almost like he had a pet loaf of bread there, the way he was holding it, carrying it up, and then he petted it. It was like, yeah, exactly. His beloved loaf of bread. I mean, he used to wrap bread, but it was like just a loaf, and he tapped it. It was like, see, that's clever writing. Uh, that's intelligent see, writing. Well, what was so funny is it You're held right. my attention. I was about, I was like, you know, you keep waiting for that punchline to deliver, and with the music and watching his body, his mannerisms going up, he'll. You know, a lot of times you might get impatient, but it's like, where's the punchline? And it delivered with a punchline. I mean, that was hilarious. It draws mm -hmm. you in and it makes you want to know what's yeah. going on. <laughs> well, I, I, I think one thing, like tapping the little bread like he was a little pet, that helped too. It's like, yep. you kept waiting for <laughs> what's next, what's going to happen, you know? Yeah. I mean, you didn't know whether he's going to fall down the hill and roll down or, you know, <laughs> what, or just make it to the top. Yeah. Exactly. If you know, if you noticed him walking up that hill, if you noticed his lips moving, it looks like he was swearing his head off. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, he I noticed, up. I noticed his lips moving, but I did not put that together. But that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, for our next clip, if anyone is familiar with a TV show called Mastermind, mm, I'm not. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah, I didn't yeah. think about that. I'm not. Yep, they, Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Corbett did this absolutely brilliant sketch that I'm about to show you, and uh, it's like a, it, it's it's a, like a quiz show in a way, but you're it's like one person on the spot. If you if you mark Dead Man and Arwen, if you check it out and compare it to what I'm about to show you, then you under mm -hmm. then you understand. Okay. But this was so ingenious because I think Ronnie Barker wrote the sketch. They wrote it under a different name. So here we go for the next one. And so to our first contender. Good evening. Your name, please. Uh, good evening. Your, first week, your chosen subject was answering questions before they were asked. This time, you have chosen to answer the question before last each time. Is that correct? Charlie Smithers. <laughs> <laughs> and your time starts now. What is paleontology? Yes, absolutely correct. <laughs> What's the name of the directory that lists members of the peerage? A study of old fossils. <laughs> Who are Lynn Murray and Sir Geoffrey Howe? Burks. <laughs> Correct. What is the difference between a donkey and an ass? Uh, one's a trade union leader, the other's a member of the cabinet. <laughs> Complete the quotation, to be or not to be? They're both the same. <laughs> what is Bernard Manning famous for? That is the question. <laughs> Who is the present Archbishop of Canterbury? He is a fat man who tells blue jokes. <laughs> what do people kneel on in church? The right Reverend Robert Runcie. <laughs> what do tarantulas prey on? 
hassocks. <laughs> what would you use a ripcord to pull open? Large flies. <laughs> what sort of a person lived in Bedlam? A parachute. <laughs> what is a jockstrap? A nutcase. <laughs> <laughs> For what purpose would a decorator use methylene chlorides, uh, a form of athletic support? <laughs> what did Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec do? Uh, paint strippers. <laughs> Who is Dean Martin? Um, he's a kind of artist. Yes. What sort of artist? Um, <laughs> pass. That's near enough. <laughs> What make of vehicle is the standard London bus? A singer. Correct. In 1892, Brandon Thomas wrote a famous long-running English farce. What was it? British Island. <laughs> Correct. Complete the following quotation. I started, so I finished. Complete the following quotation about Mrs. Thatcher. Her heart may be in the right place, but her... Charlie's aunt. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> What's so funny about that is, is just speaking of Mystery Science Theater 3000, I've seen that done on there. And I thought it was just brilliant. That one scene where Mike and the bots, they, they are answering and commenting to each other before they're even supposed to do it. And to yeah. see it here, I see the roots of it. That is great. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. You think how how much work Clever. must how much Ronnie Barker or whoever must put in that to actually work it out so that mm -hmm. the answers made a kind of sense even when they were to the wrong questions. Exactly, mm -hmm. that's what I mean. It's no. intelligent humor, and I so admire that. I appreciate that. Oh, you're never going to get. It. Mm -mm. Oh no. Not no, in no, this no. day and age. Not in this day and age. Because Malcolm and Wise did the same thing, didn't they, Purple and not, uh, Colin? Yeah. Yep, they did. No, no, but they had the original uh Mags Magnus and actually answering the, uh, asking the questions, which was so much help. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well today we've become desensitized to intelligence. We really have. We uh, we mm. in our comedy particularly, we like to go for the shock value or the the gotcha. This is just it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Hmm. And I miss and, it. And everything has to be so quick. I mean, this they mm -hmm. set it up brilliantly and you know, you have to engage into it and think about it. But now it's like it's like you said, slapstick and, and quick and they've got to do it quick because apparently attention they feel at least mm -hmm. the audiences have a limited attention span and they have to resort well, to those basic tricks to get the laughs when you know, there's they're they're cheapening the humor though. There's no hold. There's no holdout mm -hmm. for the punchline anymore. That no, is true. exactly. Yeah. It's all instant gratification. They well, want, like it now, that, want it now. Want it now. Want it now. Like the clip where he's walking up the hill. I mean, if you just bear with it, stay with it. The punchline knocks you down. It, it's a great. It's a great line. But you know, mm -hmm. you want it wrapped up in ten seconds. You can't do that. Yeah, I agree. Yep. And, well, and again, it's it's one where the humor doesn't necessarily rely on you knowing what the advert was. If, you, if you're if familiar with the original advert and you know it's about a kid cycling up a hill having got a loaf of bread, yeah, but you don't have to know that. It, it, it's all in the sketch. It's all in the line. You know, It's obvious oh, yeah. that it's about a loaf of bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, to our next sketch and... I not really don't want to say this, but no offense to the drag artists and all this and that, and uh, the people who are going to take offense. Who cares? This is Ronnie Barker dressed up as a woman, a poet, a woman who did poetry named Pam Ayers. <laughs> so, she, she she didn't tell poems; she told poems. Poems and songs. <laughs> but wait for the punchline because you'll be familiar yeah. what he says because everybody knows the person that will be said. Here we go. Oh. 
My Secret by Pam Ayres. <laughs> I'm on the telly all the time with poems what I wrote, suppressing giggles in me cheek and chuckles in me throat. <laughs> but I'm now going to surprise you. Forgive me if I brag about my well-kept secret. I'm Benny Hill in drag. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. I love the days when you could do something like that. And oh just, yes. And for it to be what it was, you're playing a character. It's a character. And the the funny thing was after I mean, even with the payoff, if you look at his face, he does kind of look like Benny Hill in the face. He does. He does. Smile, <laughs> that snide <laughs> smile. And that that was a re reasonably good. Um, impression of Pam Ayres as well, and that was sort, mm -hmm. of, so, sort of poetry. She did that sort of sharp, snappy, of, not all of it, but sort of, I mean, I've never been into poetry, but I really used to like watching her on TV. That is great. <laughs> I always used to love to see them dressed up as women because they were no strangers to it, it was funny every yeah, time. Well, we had some like that too, and, and they did it so well. But that was part of the joke, you know. It was just mm -hmm. exactly. It wasn't mean, and you know, mean no. humor. It was, Tracy it was all part Bob. of the skit. What was that? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I'm going to mention, they did dress up as women that looked more like fellas in a uh, a serial sketch they did was called "The Worm That Turned," where women took over England. <laughs> <laughs> You can find it on YouTube out there, folks. It is absolutely funny as hell because they did a load of these serials. Uh, uh, Diana Dawes, yeah? Uh, yes, Diana, Diana, Dawes, one Dawes, Diana Dawes was like the head of it all. And I've got to admit, their serials was absolutely funny. You can't find some today on YouTube, but there's one that I did include on the uh, description on here that you all should watch. I know it's over an hour long and we can't show it tonight because... It'll take too much time, and that's called the Phantom Raspberry Blower of all, Old London Town. Oh, classic. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you watch that all the way through, it was written by a gentleman, which was Ronnie Barker, and the great Spike Milligan. Now, whoever's not familiar with Spike Milligan, we will be doing a tribute show to him in the future. Nice. Nice. So, who is familiar with the swear, swear box? In I what can't. context? <laughs> no, beat, you know, do what you beat and beat, beat me, mate. Yeah. Well, thank <laughs> you, Colleen. You just gave it away. But <laughs> our next step, <laughs> our next step no. is, right, is on the terms of swearing. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Evening, Mr. Parson. Evening, Dolly. Well, how's the f beer? Flat as f now watch it, Mr. Parson. You'll have to mind your language in here from now on. Look here. What's a swear box? That's a f good idea. It's a charity and church fund. Fine pay time. Oh, you'll make a f***ing forty out of me. You might now. You owe me 20p already. 20p? 25 now. Oh, 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 all right. You got change for a f***ing win. You won't need much change if you carry on like this. Oh, that's true. That's true. Too f***ing right, I will. Here we go. Image out. Hello, Gilbert. Oh, big <laughs> nippy. You're going for a fall of <laughs> snow. Oh, okay. Anything from you, Mr. Robbins? Yeah, swear box in here now. Don't worry. Have these on me. Quite a bit of times. Quite right too. But time this lot did something from the <laughs> church. Yeah, <laughs> dozy lot. Of <laughs> what cost you ten p? Ten p? You never <laughs> told me that. You never. <laughs> It's 5p for f***ing and 10p for f***ing. <laughs> 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 Who made all this I'm standing here like a What are we going to have for this week? I'm going to have a pint of uh, best beer, Dolly, I think. What are you going to have, Jack? Uh, I think I'll have five pounds worth of silver, please, Dolly. And I'm going to take this swear box. I'm going to sit over here. We'll have a decent, civilised <laughs> conversation. <laughs> well, who's your love life then, Gilbert? <laughs> Non-existent, mate. <laughs> oh, not too f***ing grand. I had an argument with a Wife last Friday night about going to the dogs. I said I was going anyway. Well, she get me around the table with a 
Swear box looks mighty full. Yeah. yeah, and Dolly tells us all going to the church. Yeah, that's a nice surprise for you, eh, Vicar? Surprise? I'm the <laughs> who thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yes. yes. I'll tell you something. Ronnie Barker knew how to write that <laughs> in sketch. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought it was really clever well, the, the way the barmaid played. Well, the the word the word work. Sorry. Sorry. Beeping signal came out of beeping again. Um, I thought it was really clever the way the, the barmaid's going to And she's she literally just sat in. You know, she, she's just sat, so matter of fact. We just is it five people and ten people. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Just laying it all out. Yeah. <laughs> I won't, I won't tell you when they came in, the vicar was the one that had the idea of the yeah. square box to begin with. I've hilarious. been in some pubs that I think needed some square boxes. Mm. <laughs> and everyone was so happy. They're just, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, my gosh. I'll tell you something. I have got a square box on my phone. Uh, uh, I've got a bleep out on my phone now. So, I wonder if this might play Fortnite. I think you'll probably end up destroying it, Arwen. <laughs> Actually, that's a great idea. Proceeds could go to Mary's charity. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, that that would be every, it. Would be full, and we would have been done by now if that were the case. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, Lord have mercy, because that would be kind of that would be really blue at that point. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now our next sketch. How many times? Uh, well, purple, you've been abroad so many times, haven't you? This is related to the language barrier, and have you had any problems like trying to understand people speaking in a different language? Purple? Mm hmm Oh, yes. Yeah, you... yep, it's happened. Yep. Breakdown in communication. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, our next sketch is related to uh, trying to teach people to understand languages. And Arwen, prepare yourself because you'll be pissing yourself all over the place when you hear this one. Bye, penis swear box. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, 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 Colin. You asked for that. that. I know I asked for that, but can I just say something? At least I didn't say the <laughs> but. <you know. laughs> What's the arm in it? It's just me and Mark now. So. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Everyone has it out for me to do something, fall off my chair, spit out my drink. <laughs> Like okay, yeah. Okay, everyone, prepare yourselves to this because uh warning to everybody in the chat, if you bust a blood vessel, I'm very sorry. <laughs> anyway, here <laughs> Too we go. Bad. <laughs> here we go. Water down then. Here we the go. establishment is not responsible for your blood vessel. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Professor Gavista Unfanger Pitten. Tonight we have a Swedish lesson for you, but with a difference. It is in Norwegian. 
Perhaps <laughs> some of you are wondering why I'm dressed as a waiter. It is because tonight I'm, I'm gonna pause this for a second. Don't tell Andre from Midnight Sage about this sketch. <laughs> he probably already knows about it and he's not waiter. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Our lesson is entitled In the Restaurant, or as we say in Sweden, In the Restaurant. <laughs> but before we go over to the scene, let me explain that as we act out our little drama for you, there will be on the screen subtitles, which, as you know, are used in Swedish films and which are necessary to explain to the English people what is going on in the bedroom scenes. <laughs> but to make it easier we spell it out for you we use only one letter for each word now this also helps with the pronunciation instead of putting thus hello we put thus l o <laughs> you see on similarly here we have here pt you see pt and here we have CT. <laughs> oh my God. And here we have another picture for you. Come with me and we will begin the lesson. <laughs> Like yodeling. L O L O R U B C Yes, we are B C L O L O L O L O F U N E X <laughs> S B F X F U N E M Nine <laughs> I F C D M V F N ten E M <laughs> BFM? Ah! <laughs> oh! C D M. O S V F M. O K M N X. M N X. <laughs> F U N E T. <laughs> One T. One T. Okay, M X and T. <laughs> M X and T for one. V F N ten E X. <laughs> you said U F X. Y F N U N E X. <laughs> M. <laughs> Silly cow. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. It just, it just goes to show if I if I go on purple or anyone else's stream to my, uh, during the week and say L O, you all know what I'm on about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. catering. Have you any have you any eggs? <laughs> oh. But it's absolutely ingenious that sketch how we did it. It is yeah. absolutely mm. to play on words like that and you just use single letters as words. Really? It, it would just, be oh. it would be great to like try and recreate that sketch. Mm -hmm. It would be great. Mm -hmm. But any any other opinions on that? Uh, what to throw you out to there? That was the first time I've actually ever seen anything pulled off like that. Me too. I Me mean, too. It, that couldn't be done. Uh, I'm comparing it to American comedy. That I don't think it would play off well with anybody over here trying to pull that off. It just wouldn't. 
Mm -mm. People be like, what's going on? What is that? This is making me scared. <laughs> Dumb yanks. <laughs> yeah, three or four people laughing their asses off, and then, whoops, I'm sorry. And um, and swear box, yeah, <laughs> swear box, and um, and everybody else in the crowd doing, huh? <laughs> yeah, they would. What does this mean? I don't get it. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> as, as, as Owen said, the best joke of all. They're talking about Norwegian and Swedish, and Ronnie Barker comes in dressed like he's Austrian. That was wrong. <laughs> he's, he's just, he's just, Ronnie Barker's just come off like, the set of the stand of music. That's not Austrian Ronnie Barker's Ronnie pianist? Corbett, Colin. <laughs> Sorry, Ronnie Corbett's just come off the you know. Yeah, but was he, uh, was he German or was he Austrian? That's a question. Was... Sorry, Mark. I would say it's Austrian, definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I would say Austrian. <laughs> but that skit wouldn't work without that little bit at the beginning where he's explaining it. You know, if you jump right. straight into the, the scene with the in the restaurant, it just it would fall apart. <laughs> That's why yeah. it's so brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you just Yeah, especially when you just go up to a picture and here's another picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, like, I know where this is going. <laughs> Oh. And that's another sign of really good writing because it's a wink to the audience. Because by then you've already picked up where the joke's going; they don't Very have clever. to explain it to you. And when he turns and looks at the, he's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> "Another picture." Yeah. <laughs> Stig needs to see that skit too if he has it, because this is Stig Norwegian. <laughs> Brilliant! Absolutely. Right, well, anyway, moving on to our next sketch. This is relating to symbols. And there is a mention of a <clears throat> certain broadcast corporation in it. But I'm not going to say anything from there on. So prepare yourselves. Here we go. I love this. Good evening. As you look at me tonight, you will notice two things. One, I'm very handsome, and two, <laughs> two, there is a small rectangle at the bottom right-hand corner of your picture. Now, this symbol means that the program you're watching is unsuitable for certain people. So, if you're certain people, switch off. <laughs> with the rest of you, let me explain. What do all our symbols mean? Well, this rectangle means that you shouldn't watch the program uh, if you are offended by violence. This symbol means you shouldn't watch if you're offended by rectangles. <laughs> this symbol means that the program coming up is going to be a little bit naughty. Uh, this one means uh, that we haven't said the program is going to be naughty, but it will be just the same, so we'll get a nasty shock. <laughs> this symbol, it means it isn't going to be naughty at all, but we've said it will be to attract more viewers. <laughs> now, all these symbols together simply mean you needn't watch, as it's another boring old program about geometry. <laughs> Let's see how it all works. This symbol means either that the language isn't fit for children or that I've cut myself shaving. <laughs> In which case, the language wouldn't be fit for children. But what about those of a nervous disposition? Well, we've got this. <laughs> It tells us that the program will actually mention the word knickers. But for those who are offended by the knickers symbol itself, we simply add these, which means, of course, danger, knickers ahead. <laughs> Prefer it, not tonight, Josephine. <laughs> <laughs> this symbol here means that Mrs. Whitehouse has phoned in. <laughs> and she's fuming. <laughs> this one means that she's beside herself. <laughs> that means she's fainted. <laughs> we also use we also use initials. Now we have here, if we see that. We know that the program will include curvaceous thighs. <laughs> okay. This 
this, of course, means, as we know, violence. And this will mean, of course, bare bosoms. <laughs> <laughs> of course, obviously, there is no company that would use them all at once. <laughs> <laughs> That, as we all know, means BBC, unless, of course, it's the other way up when it stands for a programme about a bald-headed man dreaming of two well-developed ladies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Had enough of that one, have you? Right. <laughs> Lastly, to save money, we shall use road signs where possible. Now, that means that you can only watch if you're over 30. That one means the next programme is Gardener's Club. <laughs> that one, of course, is the Rolling Stones. <laughs> and this one, obviously, is a programme about family planning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That one will be William Tell. <laughs> and that, of course, is the bent version. <laughs> this is only one thing, of course, and that is the final episode of Zed Cards. <laughs> and this one, well, any offers? <laughs> That's right, madam. Father, dear father. <laughs> now, when anyone goes on too long or is a stupid old bore, you will get this symbol here. So, let me sum up. <laughs> yes! Uh, I'm dead. <laughs> God. That is so good. I can, I can honestly say, Hank, purple, Arwen, you might have to have warning symbols on the beginning of your show just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but which ones? <laughs> Did he rub the pair of panties when he moved? Yes, he it, lo it looked like he did. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that man. killed me. Oh, man. I'll never look at the letters P, P, and C again the same way. <laughs> I know, right? But I tell you, I, I, I hadn't seen that clip, but it was like, it was a great use of prop comedy right there. <laughs> Really, it's something different. I, I, I just so effective. It, it was His oh, delivery, my. that delivery, that just dry, matter of fact delivery. And you know, it was oh. naughty also. It was naughty in ways without being over the top. And I mean, it was like yes, danger yes. ahead and the bald man. It just it was it was great. It was a great delivery, and you know, and it got the point across. It was. It got a little spicy, but never yeah. lewd. Right. Mm -hmm. Never lewd. I don't know if Americans could do that. No, <laughs> I no, really don't. No, that's not, that's not, yeah. it, it would be impossible for any American to pull that off. I don't think that it was could happen. So clever. I don't either. That took that that took thought and timing and delivery, and I'm here for it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I've noticed that he's a master at the uh, at the flash delivery. He can he's dropping him so quick that I mean that's. Yeah, it's really good how he's doing it. I mean, like going back to what Arwen said about Robin Williams, Robin Williams could do that that exact same thing, and that's what's that's what's yeah. making it really, really, really funny is that they're, he's dropping with the one liner so quick and moving on to the next one, and it's it's the delivery is it's all in the delivery, and the delivery uh, is excellent. It's so well, organic. Yeah, the way I see it, he's keeping a straight face all that time without bursting yeah. into laughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knew he how to play the audience. He knew how to play the audience that way. Some people do. They just they feed off of it, and they they get it. Oh, so good. Yeah, uh, Shane, I'm very sorry to let you know that we can't add that clip tonight due to copyright law, but you can find it on YouTube. Uh, it involves the public phone call. Um, Colin, I'll let you explain that one. I don't remember it to be quite honest. It's the, so many of them, two, but I... it's the two talking in the phone box sketch. Oh yeah, I can, I can imagine what it's like. What it was, what it about? Yes, they did again. Very, very clever juxtapositioning. Mm. Right. So, this is going. The next sketch is a very long one. It was voted number one in their like greatest sketches of all time. 
So this is a great play on words. Me and Collins have seen this so many times. Don't know about you, Purple. I know you love the two, Ronnie, very much. It's oh, just... If it's real. the one I'm thinking of, then yes. Yes, <laughs> it probably is the one you're thinking of. So, okay, we've got Arwin, Mark and Dadman. Here we go. Here we Prepare go. yourselves. Four candles. <laughs> Four candles. Here you are. Four candles. No, four candles. Well, there you are. Four candles. <laughs> no, four <laughs> candles. <laughs> candles for forks. <laughs> 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 Got any plugs? Plugs? Yeah. Plug what kind of plugs? A rubber one, bathroom. <laughs> what size? 13 amp. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> electric plugs, electric bathroom plugs, you call them. Tree, electric bathroom. <laughs> what? Saw tips. Saw tips. <laughs> <laughs> What do you want, ointment or something like that? <laughs> no, saw tips, but covering the sores. Tips. Uh, oh, no, we haven't got any. Haven't got oh. any. Covering them, but we haven't got any. Got any O's? O's? O's. <laughs> No O's. O's? I thought you meant O's. O's. Say O's. 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 No O's. O's? What a... Oh, you mean patios? Patios? <laughs> no, no, O's, O's. O's for the gate. Mong repose. O's. <laughs> Letter O's. Letter O's. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> cool, say, why didn't you bleed and tell me that I'm up the stairs? I'm up the stairs already. 
any fun that they can tell me, but in there I'm up and down the shop all the time. <laughs> How many do you want? No, tens of peas. <laughs> tens of peas. You're having me on, aren't you? <laughs> Pumps, 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 and pumps, foot pumps. Come on, <laughs> foot pumps, foot pumps, foot pumps. <laughs> See foot pumps. <laughs> Tidy up in here. No pumps for your feet, brown pump size nine. <laughs> you are having me on, you are oh, definitely no. having me on. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> washers? What, windscreen washers, car washers, dishwashers, floor washers, back scrubbers, lavatory cleaners, floor washers. <laughs> Half inch washers. Oh, yeah. Tap washers, tap washers. Yeah. Look, I've had about enough of this. Give us that dish. <laughs> Take it all myself down here. What's this? What's that? Oh, that does it. That does it. I've, I've had just about enough of this. Mr. Jones, you come out and serve this customer, please. I've just about had enough of this. Look what it's got on there. Look what it's got on there. Right. And who would you like? One or two? <laughs> 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 Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> the thing about that is most of the time you can you know you almost exactly what's gonna come and it's still hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very ingenious prop use of prop comedy there. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. But Ronnie Corbett's size was ingenious. Mm -hmm. That's that, that is so famous that four candles is all you need to say to anybody who's mm -hmm. seen it. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> four candles. <laughs> uh, the of the word hose, that is a totally different meaning in America, isn't it? Uh, the what? Uh, the hose? The word, yeah, the word hose. Uh, it would have it would be the garden utensil or the uh water hose that's what <laughs> see i see i told you they were clean living uh, yeah, yeah. they don't think of that sort of thing because they don't live in double no, i was thinking yeah. another kind of hose I was yeah. with yeah. the pumps yeah. i'm like oh where is yeah. he going with this yeah <laughs> Oh no! I, I think we're on the same page with that one. Uh, well, we're just warped, Dad man. That's our problem. Yeah, exactly. I know. We're just dirty. We had twenty years of culture. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's oh. all right. It's even more confusing for me. I wear hose half the time. <laughs> oh, I was thinking hose, like hose. Yeah, no, I'm not. Never. We won't go there. I know we're. I know we're all. <laughs> it, now, if he'd have brought a woman out, that would have that would have been. Yeah, I waited for that. That was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> if he was That's an American boy, that probably would do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, right. For our next sketch, uh, Purple and Colin, you are very familiar with Cockney rhyming slang, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, purple. Back. As you are our guest, I will let you. I want you to explain what uh, Cockney rhyming slang means to Mark and Devin and Arwin. <laughs> to the that. Americans, explain it to us. <laughs> <laughs> Cockney rhyming slang. Okay, so Cockney, obviously, it as um, um, as suggested, it 
it comes from London. Basically, it's a kind of dialect that's just in this one uh, little area. And what they do is they rhyme two things together to mean something else. So, for example, stairs would be apples and pears. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> and, and usually the thing that they're describing has absolutely nothing to do with the cockney slang that they use, just to confuse things. <laughs> so, right, um, to get prepared for our next sketch, this is more like a sermon, um, what they say in churches and that, and it's Ronnie Barker absolutely pulling it off. What, what one... One of the most cleverly sketched he's ever done. So he, you'll be listening to a story, but you'll be listening to the wordplay he comes out with as it goes along. So here we go for the next one. Should stop leaving me that. There we go. Yeah. Now, many of you here tonight will know that Cain and Abel and Hampstead Heath are Cockney rhyming slang. <laughs> Cain and Abel means table and Hampstead Heath means teeth. We are glad to welcome tonight a large group of Cockney worshippers to Evensong and it is to them that I wish to address my sermon. I want to tell you a story. A long time ago, in the days of the Israelites, there lived a poor man. He had no trouble and strife. <laughs> she had run off with a tea leaf some years before. And he now lived with his eldest bricks and mortar, Mary. <laughs> Being very short of bees and honey, un unable to pay the burden on Trent, he was tempted to go forth into the Bristol city and see what he could half inch. <laughs> he would say to Mary, his bricks and mortar, I will take a ball of chalk into the town and buy some tobacco for my cherry ripe. <laughs> and he would put on his almond rocks and his dicky dirt <laughs> and his round the houses and set off down the frog and toad until he reached the outskirts of the Bristol. <laughs> then people would stare at him for his dicky dirt was torn. <laughs> his howdy-do's were full of holes. <laughs> and his coat was very Westminster Abbey. <laughs> he was also somewhat unclean, being too poor to purchase any cape of good hope. His bushel and peck was extremely 2.30. <laughs> and people passed by on the other side to avoid the pen and ink. <laughs> he was truly an ugly man. His north and south drooped. His mince pies were watery. <laughs> and he had a big red, I suppose. <laughs> One day, his bricks and mortar gave him some money, saying, here is a saucepan lid. Go and buy food a loaf of Uncle Fred and a pound of standard ease. <laughs> but do not tarry in the town and bring me back what is left of the money to buy myself some new underwear. I need a new pair of early doors. <laughs> My present ones are full of holes and I am in a continual George raft. <laughs> but instead of returning with the bees and honey for his bricks and mortars early doors, he made his way to the rubber dub for a tumble down the sink <laughs> and indulged himself freely on the bottle. And he became very elephant's trunk and Mozart. <laughs> and when the landlord of the rubber dub called Bird Lime, the man set off back towards his cat and mouse, reeling about all over the frog and toad and drunkenly humming a stewed prune. <laughs> and it came to Kyber Pass. <laughs> But as he staggered along, he saw on the pavement a small brown Richard III. <laughs> <laughs> and he stared at it, lying there at his plates of meat. And he said, oh, small brown Richard III, how lucky I did not step on you. And he picked it up. And he put it on top of a wall where no one could step on it. And a rich four by two ish merchant 
who witnessed the deed, put his hand into his skyrocket and took out a Lady Godiva and handed it to the man saying, I saw you pick up that Richard III and remove it from the pavement. And that was a kindly act. Take this Lady Godiva for your froth and bubble. And the man took it and went on his way. And the Richard III flew back to its nest. <laughs> Took half a second to work in that one, didn't it? Yeah. When the man arrived home, his daughter was sitting by the Jeremiah on her favourite Lionel Blair. And she arose angrily and said, Once again you come home, elephants, trunk and Mozart. You have spent all the money I gave you. Now I cannot have my new pair of early doors. Neither can I have wine as you do. And the man said, Fear not, here is a lady Godiva which I earned by a kindly act. And the woman was overjoyed and said, thank you, Father. Now I can have my pair of early doors. Verily, that kindly act has ensured that I have more than enough to cover my bottle and glass. <laughs> oh, so good. So good. It's, it's, amazing how, it's amazing how everyone's mind goes to the same place with Richard III as well. Oh, yeah. Yes! Yeah. Yes! <laughs> brilliant wordplay. That's all I can say. That is brilliant. Yes. I totally I think, agree. Te technically, I think Cockney rhyming slang might be what's called a cant, a sort of secret language. Um, I think they're just do it to annoy people to be oh, yes yeah. <laughs> yeah. well, if, if there are any cockneys left in london of course i think most yes. are ethics now but um, yeah well yeah. Do, you remember, do you remember the film uh austin powers gold member mm -hmm. where you had the uh, michael kane and mike myers doing that like one minute sketch in the film or them talking in cockney rhyming slang and they had to have subtitles down the bottom of what they were on about if anyone remembers that scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember it. Because <laughs> I didn't know, when I was getting, getting this clip together, I said, should I put subtitles on it or not so they could understand? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I I was thinking that as well, you know, why they never put subtitles on, but it's so much funnier, like you say, because people automatically go to a different word. <laughs> you know, they, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially for the Richard III. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mark, uh, Dad Man, have you got anything to add to this at all? Uh, really. I would be, I would be totally confused if I heard somebody speaking like that in London. But... <laughs> Don't worry, it won't happen. <laughs> when, you, when you say using subtitles, you mean uh, right uh, the subtitles for the words, the phrases that they're actually yes. using? Yeah, I that would help me a little bit because I, I have I'm, my hearing's not what it used to be either, but I've always. Had, some accents always give me trouble and am I hearing it clearly and understanding it right? So a subtitle might have been good to hear to specifically see what the word was because sometimes it sounds one way but it's really another word. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, I mean, it could be used, you know, we have that debate around here, subtitles or not anyway, so. The the only problem with running with running subtitles onto that one is mm. it would kill the Richard the Third joke. Yeah, mm. I, I, I understand that True. too. I, yeah. I understand that too. Um, so yeah, yeah. But just 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 thinking it through. I know. I know. I thought exactly the same again. You know, and, and then till I till I realised that okay, well, yeah, but then <laughs> it wasn't poo. It was a bird. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Oh, I'm not sure I knew what it was until the, 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 the there. That was hilarious. Yeah. We're going to eat when she picked it, picked Richard to turn up and put it on the face. <laughs> 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 the, the best bit, though, is I was, I was listening because we. I just wanted a little while ago. I was out here listening and it was my there was there was literally I could I think I could see everybody's including all his brains working. There was about half a second pause there mm -hmm. when it when it said picked up and went up to the as a half a second pause where the complete cognitive dissonance set in and everybody realized oh shit he went burned or turned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it was, it was you know, said I mean that. Oh, you know, again, such a fantastic use of words. Brilliant. Well, 
Anyway, um, Matt, for uh, an next sketch, uh, there was a program years ago on the BBC. I don't know if they show it anymore. It was called Tomorrow's World. And this is Ronnie Barker's take on it, which is absolutely funny as hell, of what all the props he used in, in it. So here we go for the next one. Good evening, and welcome to the day after tomorrow's world. Tonight, we show you something smooth, streamlined, functional, and fast. <laughs> but that's enough about me. <laughs> I'm standing here in the kitchen of the future, the kitchen that's got every labor-saving device you can think of, apart from the Liberal Party. <laughs> <laughs> Let us look around, shall we? First of all, here is the special eye-level grill. <laughs> Designed by Ronnie Corbett. And then... <laughs> And then in this one multi-unit, uh, there is a mixer, the oven, and the washing machine all in one. Well, how does it work? Well, supposing, you see, supposing... Oh, yes. Supposing I want some crumpet at tea time. <laughs> well, supposing I do. <laughs> what I do after five o'clock is my own business. <laughs> now, what about a cake for my birthday? Now, I shall need some cake mix. Now, over here, you see we have cake. There, that's for shortcake. And, of course, that's a very long cake. <laughs> we'll take the short cake, I think. And uh, we put it in there. Uh, add the eggs. <laughs> and the milk. Icing sugar. And, of course, 21 candles. <laughs> yeah. Now, we mix for only a few seconds and simply pop it into the oven like this. <laughs> But remember, of course, that this oven and mixer is also the washing machine, and I'm doing some laundry for the weatherman in the next studio at the same time. <laughs> now, what do we get when we turn the dial? Oh, <coughs> well, we get a small electric shock. So <laughs> we'll ignore that for the moment. Now, let's just check the time on our digital clock here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, either it's two o'clock or they're still on strike. Yeah. This exciting innovation I have here yeah. is the new kitchen cow. <laughs> there it is. Right, now we, we simply put the grass in here, like this. And uh, the milk comes out here. <laughs> now this, of course, entirely replaces the milkman. Unless you're the woman at number 44 with the bow front. <laughs> well, then, what about... What about the food of the future? Now, for a start, it's going to be bigger. Now, let me demonstrate. We scientists, uh, we have found that the old vegetables were too small, far too small. For instance, what can I do with this carrot? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, madam. But seriously, I tried carrots as decoration. I even bought my wife this 18-carat ring. But uh... <laughs> Now, here, now, on the contrary, here is a single section from the giant super carrot of the future. Now, there it is. You see, now, if you ate all that side, you could see Muhammad Ali in a dark room with your eyes shut. <laughs> Even if he wasn't there. <laughs> On this side, you see, there's Matt Monroe singing, I'm in the mood for love. <laughs> of course, it doesn't end there. Here is the new BBC radish. Here we are. <laughs> with 13 guaranteed repeats on BBC Two. <laughs> Thank you. Here is a shredded wheat for the woman with two men in her life. <laughs> Here are the woman with 20 men in her life. <laughs> Ladies with larger appetites than that should see their doctor. <laughs> He'll probably give them one of these. <laughs> Here is the new uh, oven ready budgerigar. There we are. <laughs> Oh, oh, <laughs> Sorry, wrong cucumber. Try it. <laughs> here, here is the mouse trap of the future. Here it is. It consists of a piece of cheese, a Jimmy Young record, and a brick. <laughs> the mouse smells the cheese. He comes out of his hole, plays the Jimmy Young record. When the poor little so and so puts his paws over his ears, you creep up behind him, hit him with a brick. <laughs> <laughs> and here we have. Ah, here we have. 
the new egg-laying machine, the kitchen egg-laying. Well, what makes it light up, you ask? Simple. Inside is a battery head. <laughs> now, how do you feed it? Well, simple. You take one of these pellets. Now, in this pellet, there is enough concentrated hen food for six months. I put it in there, load it in the special gun, and by means of this oh, aperture no. in here, I shoot the pellet straight into its mouth. Thus. <laughs> There's another hole on this end. That's the wrong end of the box. No wonder the eggs come out cracked. Well, now, before I leave you, it's just time to remove our cake from the oven and also to see how the weatherman's laundry is getting on. Now, here we are. Ah, oh, yes, there we are. There it is. A very nice uh, cake in a wool rayon mixture. <laughs> With a zip front, there we are. <laughs> and of course, here we have a fine set of beautifully iced underpants. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> should be very pleased with these. When his wife blows out the candles tonight, there'll be a cold front and a following wind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. oh, best excellent worker props there. <laughs> genius, genius. See, I, I, I like prop comedy. A lot, and that was one of the better scenes that, that I've seen there. But what's so amazing is just his reactions. It's so deadpan. It's like you see the shoot the chick, you know, the, the thing to the, the battery, and then it's like he it just doesn't react. It's like, oh, you know, and, and just the ability, the facial expressions really add a lot. And, oh, gosh, that was hilarious. That was pure performance <laughs> art. Yeah, it yeah. really was. I would have loved to have been in that audience watching that being filmed. Oh, yes. I agree. I was <laughs> I wondering agree. how many how many people fell out their chairs watching these sketches. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I didn't, that's why I put my water bottle down. I wasn't gonna have anything drinking at that moment. Uh, is there anything else uh, anyone wants to add before we move on to the next sketch? <laughs> I, I, I would tell you, I would tell the interesting story about um, why we think how itself you see in the dark, but that's nothing to do with this sketch. So. No, <laughs> I'll leave that hanging. <laughs> but I must, I, I have to admit, I did have suspicions he might go a slightly different way when he said about when, when he was talking about crumpet, because crumpet is also um, yeah. slang for um, young ladies, let us say. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I would not have been. I would not be surprised if he that crump. He said about crump, and you know, you'd open up and Carol Hawkins or someone would come out in a bikini or something. I would not have been surprised <laughs> at that one because again, that's the other. I say, you know, I mean, especially as he he alluded to that. You know, I mean, in crumpet. So. Mm. Okay. Well, our next sketch is related to a, a woman with a low cut. A cut top and Ronnie Corbett supposed to be having a nice evening when Ronnie Barker walks in. So, and I'll tell you something, Ronnie Barker knows how to play words on this one. So mm -hmm. everybody, here we go. Oh, okay. I should stop leaving my gaps. Ah, good evening. Good evening. Tickle your body with a feather tonight. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Uh, is it particularly grotty weather tonight? Oh, yes. <laughs> I say, that sweater looks a little risky. Pardon? I say, I'd better have a little whiskey. Oh, yes. I thought you said something about my jumper. No, 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 that's very nice. Oh, thank you. Mustn't get hiccups or they'll fall out. What did you say? I just heard the cricket score. They're all out. <laughs> now, who's this silly ass with an ugly daughter? <laughs> I say, would you kindly pass the jug of water? <laughs> Thanks awfully, you dozy fish face. <laughs> what? I said, thanks awfully cosy, this place. If you don't mind my saying so, you seem to be saying things other than what you say you're saying, if you see what I mean. Ah, oh, well, that's, that's a moustache, you see. It tends to muffle my voice somewhat. The wife likes it so, otherwise I'd shave it off and drown it in the sink. Otherwise you'd what? I'd shave it off. I'm sounding indistinct. Uh, yes. <laughs> you're a nice little girl, aren't you? Do you drop them for a friend? <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, have you dropped in on your friend? Oh, no, he's my boss. He's an accountant. Oh, well, that accountant, yeah. <laughs> I think, my name is Collinson, by the way. I sell long hooters to alligators. You what? I sell computers and calculators. <laughs> so this is your secretary, what? Yes, yes. We're working late at the office. Mm -hmm. 
Going back for a squeeze and a cuddle? Yes, going back the VATs and a muddle. <laughs> yes, she's, uh... <laughs> she, is, uh, she is my new secretary. I had to sack the last one. Uh, she ignored your advances. Yes, she was a bore at dances. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose this one's a right little goer. Yes, she does write a little slower, but I don't worry at all. I can see her sort, yes. She's one of the Mad with Desire Brigade. Uh, strange that you should realise that. What? Her dance with the Fire Brigade. <laughs> I want to look up your skirt and down your dress. I want to look up Lord Burton's town address. I think that's somewhere in my drawers. Oh, that sounds like an invitation. <laughs> if I were you, I'd lurch through those doors and get her back to the office. Yes, I'll search through her drawers and get her a bag of toffees. <laughs> Sort of chap. Yes, but let's talk about you. You'll never drown with those water wings. I beg your pardon. I say you ought to wear brown with those sort of things. It's not really your moustache. You're actually <laughs> saying those things, aren't you? Well, just trying to drum up a bit of trade, that's all. What sort of trade? I sell deaf aids. Pardon? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Oh, God. Just so good. Oh, no. I always thought that the women did really well in that keeping a straight face. <laughs> yes, yeah. they did. They did. <laughs> oh, so good. Just the mental aptitude of it all, you know, and the timing and the, oh, there's just no room for mistake. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Um, I've just got to let you know, so I just got a message from someone apparently there's going to be a new jaws film so here is a quick sneak peek at the trailer soon as i ever get it jaws like dinner. shark jaws yeah yeah there's going to be a remake of jaws so uh, okay here we go. <laughs> From the studios that first dared to bring to the cinema stories of the magnitude of Moby Dick, the old man of the sea, the Poseidon adventure, now comes the supreme definitive drama of the predator man in his age-old battle with the deep. chilling horror that has shocked America comes searing across your screens. Just back in their days, beware, Ronnie Corbett's lurking out there. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, party was so small, you wouldn't see him coming until it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> Sneak attack! <laughs> oh, my gosh. 
<laughs> oh god, I think we are so like really out of it tonight watching these. <laughs> <laughs> this so uh, uh, I'll tell you something, it's better than any other trailer they're releasing at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> For our next sketch. This is Ronnie Barker's take on Richard the Third, which he really wanted. Well, he really wanted to do Shakespeare in that. Um, so you had. Um, so here we go. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the book program. William Shakespeare, it is generally agreed, has provided the English language with more sayings, proverbs and quotes than any other writer. Every other book title is a quote from the Bard. Many plays in the theatre do the same. Why then should not television follow suit? Here, with a little help from our caption department, is a scene from Edward VI, part one. Because the time draws faster pace, when for my crowning we must soon prepare. My liege, I have the information close. Then spill it out. Thou art already late. Thou hadst forsworn to bring me news at ten. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me first, how may I seek to rid my royal self of that arch villainess that calls herself the Queen? Queen, so she is. She is your consort, sire, or will be so when you are crowned next week in Westminster. <laughs> Motherland, her beauty is renowned. Her person is respected nationwide. <laughs> her person is the Duke of Hastings, sir. He is her lover and must get the chop. Daily they flaunt their fever in the court. He arrogant and bold and she all smiles. Contented with her lot and with her bed, each night with her bride's head revisited. (laughs) Revenge shall be complete. My crowning's perk, my coronation's treat. (laughs) (laughs) Evidence with all. Observe the Queen's speech when she's with him close. (laughs) As oft beneath the starry sky at night, (laughs) <laughs> he speaks in tones both moribund and wise. <laughs> and he, during the reign of John, kept silent and endured the tyrannies. <laughs> that will I, most royal liege. He often plots with Lovell against the crown. These points of view are treason you well know. <laughs> he can it think. But can he ever it show? (laughs) He must be cornered with some trumped up charge of treasonable acts, both little and large. (laughs) No blemish shall besmirch my nuptial hour. Come, dancing maidens. (laughs) Trumpets, play away. (laughs) Drums that do beat at night must throb in day. (laughs) Claim us when Let Hastings lose his head He would have been a good Shakespearean actor, wouldn't he? Yeah, he yes, would, he would. very much right. so Right, as Purple and Mark have got to be leaving, with, uh, leaving us shortly I'm going to go straight into this next sketch Now, if we ever all meet up at a pub or a bar, I'm not ordering the drinks, <laughs> and you'll soon see why. Okay. Oh dear. Look, uh, you all go out on the terrace. Uh, I'll get the waiter to bring the drinks out, shall I? That's fine. <laughs> Off you go. Good evening. Uh, good evening. What would you like? Uh, well, to start with, I'll have a large gin tonic. Sir. Sure. 
Very large. Do I have some lemon, sir? Yeah, if there's room in the glass, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? Uh, well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I've, just, I've just met these people. You see, I don't know them at all. They're uh, all friends of my wife, you see. So, now, let's see. The, uh, the lady in the sack dress wants an enormous brandy. Uh, the young man with a flat head wants a rum and coke. Uh, Andy, uh, he's a tall chap. He's Scottish. He wants a pink gin with lemon. Uh, the girl with the boobs uh, wants a white lady. Uh, my wife will have a, a Scot of the rocks. Uh, the woman with the, with the bare arms behind her, she will have half a bottle of the house wine. And the old man with the, with the rather shifty eyes, he'll have a rough side up. Mm. But before that, uh, I'll have another gin and tonic. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh. Beautiful. So, uh, right, so that's an enormous brandy, a uh, rum and coke, a pink gin, a uh, white scotch, a wine, a, a cider, and a lemon on the rocks. Pardon, sir? <laughs> the lady in the sack dress, a brandy. See? Uh, the flat head, a rum and coke, a Scotsman behind, a white gin. Uh, the lady with a, with a pink boobs, a cider. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and the. And the, and the uh, just a minute. Just a minute. you were having a Yes, right, right. Thank you. That's, yes, I thought that was it. Yes. <clears throat> Is that mine? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, safe again, please. Certainly, sir. Now, I've got it this time. It's one brandy, uh, one rum and lemon, uh, a pink thing, a, a, a white lady with double boobs. <laughs> uh, rough, rough rocks, so wine on the house and, and a big bottle. Pardon, um, sir? Don't worry, it's all under control. Look, the lady in the sack wants a tall scotch. The bare lady with the behind wants a rum and coke. <laughs> uh, my, my wife will have an old man on the rocks. Uh, the girl with the shifty boobs wants a big bottle of brandy on the house. The young man with a flat wife uh, wants enormous wine. The, the white lady with, with, the, with the pink... Uh, just a minute. Just a minute. <laughs> uh, you've, uh, you've ordered the pink wine. Yes, I thought that was it. Yes. Is that mine? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, say it again, please. No, are you listening? It's simple. Simple. I'll have a gin tonic. I've got one ready for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Either one of these, is it? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, why, why don't you have a beer? No, thank you, sir. Right. Now, I do exactly what I'm doing. All right? Here goes. The randy girl with a big bottle wants a rough Scotsman. <laughs> rough Scotsman. The tall lemon wants a double shifty on the rocks. Uh, the, ba the bear woman with the boobs like the side of a house uh, wants, uh, wants a pink old man. The, uh, the, the normal chap with a flat gin uh, wants my wife with a beer behind. <laughs> and the red lady wants a sack of coke. It's simple enough. What are you having? Uh, look, sir, I'm... Look, no, look, ready? Now, wait a minute. Look, look, this is it, right? Ready? Forget all previous orders. Just give me a sack of coke, two large rocks, two pink boobs, an enormous lemon and a large bear lady of the house. <laughs> so I'm glad we finally got that sorted out. Yes, so am I, yes. One sack of coke. One sack of coke. <laughs> two large rocks. Two large rocks. One pair of pink boobs. One pair of pink boobs. <laughs> and, and, um, a large bear lady on the house. Oh, okay, that, right, now I'll take the lemon. You take the rocks, will you? Come on, right now, who ordered the pink boo? Oh, <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> That's my favorite. That's my favorite. I love that. That was so a good. good. That was oh, a very good one. <laughs> That's why I will never do a drinks order. Yeah, right, <laughs> right from the opening when he says sister's room in the glass. I love that. For a slice of lemon. That would be, hey, you don't want me ordering your drinks because that would be me getting bamboozled with a drink and then I'd walk in with the bricks and the pink boots and everything. Yeah, I can yeah, see that. Having in your drink. Oh, God, that was, br that was brilliant. That was great. My favourite. <laughs> well, Purple, Mark, thank you for joining us tonight or having such a great laugh or looking back at the ingenious of this man himself. Thank you for inviting me. Thank yeah. you. This of has course. been an absolute treat. Thank you. <laughs> As it was his birthday yesterday, Arwin, Purple, would you like to sing happy birthday to him? To say sure. Thank you? Sure. Purple, Absolutely. get us started. You start okay. Off. Yep, as it was his birthday yesterday, sadly we lost him in 2005, but he's still very fondly remembered, Aww. so. Happy birthday to you, 
Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear Ronnie. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. Hey. 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 Brilliant. Brilliant. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> well, everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. I hope you've had a good old chuckle rolling around on the floor and that yes. all the clips will be separately on an un, uh, unlinked uh, for everyone to watch because I'm not getting in trouble with the BBC. <laughs> so thank you very much. Purple, Mark, it would be great to have you back on the show in, again in the future to for any tribute shows or anything else you'd like to discuss about your story ideas or any stories you like to see. So it is, I like to say, it is good night from me. It's good night from her. <laughs> it's a good night from him. Um, uh. Good night from me, but my night's still young so far. So. <laughs> and it's it's a good night from her and it's a good night from him and it's good, good night, night from him take care everybody have, have a good one, one. Bye. Bye. Bye.